Good day. My name is Michelle D. Clark, and I'm a hope dealer. I saw some faces. I said, I hope y'all, I'm not selling drugs. <laughs> H-O-P-E, I help to empower women with hope with my company, Lift Life Coaching Solutions, where we are living, inspire, free, and transform. So before I get started, I always like to know like who's in my audience, even out there in live stream land. I want to know who's in my audience. So I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Y'all going to keep it real with me? Yeah. For real, for real? Yeah. Okay, everybody, we're going to test this out. Stand up. Come on, everybody stand up. Even out there in stream land, y'all stand up too. All right, now when I ask you all a question, go ahead and have a seat if it applies and remain seated. If you've ever been divorced, go ahead and have a seat. If you know someone who has had a serious illness like cancer or stroke, please have a seat. If you know anybody who's ever been arrested or in jail, have a seat. <laughs> If you know someone who has had a terrible relationship that may have involved domestic violence or rape, have a seat. If you know anyone who has made a bad decision that changed their life in the audience, have a seat. Everybody here is already seated. Now, when I asked you if you knew anybody, were you thinking of yourself? Yeah, and that's okay, because you know what? Every single thing that I said on that list, I have experienced. Every single thing because of one bad decision that left me feeling hopeless. So I want to tell you all my story of how I moved from hopelessness to happiness to live an inspired life. See, my parents, they did an excellent job of raising me. Hey, Mom and Dad. <laughs> They did. They you know, told me to go to school, get good grades, so I can get a good job or a business. They also took me to church. They gave me the message of wait until you get married before you have sex and kids. No fornication. That was what we heard in church, right? And I held all of that near and dear to me all the way up to the age of 14 when I was raped. I was raped by a 19-year-old. And see, I wasn't ready for the consequence of what it meant. See, I had in my mind that I was going to be able to wear white down the aisle way, you know, with my husband. That was going to be pure. But what happened is when I stepped as a 14-year-old girl into the room with a 19-year-old man, not only did he steal my virginity, he stole my self-identity. I didn't know who I was anymore because I didn't feel pure. I felt dirty and tainted, filthy disgusting, like a throwaway, something to just be used up and tossed to the side. So what happened is I started making bad decision after bad decision. I started to suffer through good relationships and bad relationships, and I started sabotaging the good ones. And, and next thing you know, I was suffering through an 11-year marriage that ended when I had to yell out to my daughter to dial 911 to save me. And she was only six years old. I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to move. So let me tell you something. I filed my divorce papers, y'all, and I was ready. I was like, hey, I'm ready to get my hair did, nails did, everything did, new set of racks and all of that, only to have six weeks later, after my divorce finalized, I was stricken with two strokes. Healed from that, one year later, breast cancer. So not only was I not about to get me a new set of racks, I had to get one of my girls cut off. I'm like, what is going on? It was like Murphy's Law on steroids. Wait, y'all know who Murphy is, right? Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong, and at the worst possible time. That's what was happening to me. I didn't understand. I was starting to feel hopeless. Really, really hopeless. There were times that I cried myself to sleep and I prayed to God that I wouldn't wake up. The challenge is, the reason why I kept making those bad decisions after bad decisions is because of the way I felt about myself. And it was something that's called schemas. No, it's not skin condition. I saw some people starting to scratch their eyes. There ain't no skin condition. Schemas. Were you all taking notes? S-C-H-E-M-A-S. -E schemas. Now, schemas are basically like, let's say it's like a theme song that runs through our mind. So, I don't know, do y'all like music? 
Y'all like music? Y'all like music? I love me some music. So my favorite jam is Aaliyah, Rock the Boat. Y'all remember that? Rock the boat, rock the boat, work the middle, change positions. Hey. <laughs> so that is our theme song. So let's say if the DJ put this on. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> Would that fit with rock the boat, rock the boat? Uh, no. <laughs> what about if you put something on, something like maybe, who do you love? Is it him or me? That kind of goes with rock the boat, rock the boat, right? That kind of goes with it. Hey, okay, y'all about to have me up here staffing Detroit style, hey. Okay, <laughs> so what happens is whatever fits sticks. What doesn't, we discard. And that's what was happening to me. All of the good stuff I was discarding. Remember when I said I was sabotaging those good relationships and the bad ones I was sticking in way too long because of my schema, my stinking thinking. So I had to change my stinking thinking. And y'all probably sitting there looking like, well, how did you do that? Matter of fact, y'all actually say, how you do that, Shelly? I'm so glad you asked. So what I did was there were five different things, five keys that I implemented to move from hopelessness to happiness to living this inspired life. The first thing was my source. I had to tap back into my source. Now, I don't know what your source is, but my source is God. I had to tap back into God. Because remember, I had that foundation from my parents. I used to go to church. And so I tap back into God because he loved me in spite of all the bad decisions. He loved me despite of all my flaws and all. He loves me unconditionally. That's called agape love, y'all. That's how he loved me. And so I had to tap back into that source. And as a matter of fact, let's just talk about this here. A cell phone. If you don't plug this phone back in, what will happen to this phone? Absolutely, it will die. And we are the same way. We have to plug back into a source. So I don't know what your source is. Mine is Jesus Christ. Hold on one second, y'all. Let me take a little sippy sip. Ah, good. I know some people like, listen, I ain't come up here to see you drinking no water. <laughs> So we have to tap back into a source. In order, I, that's what I did. In order to move from hopelessness to happiness, to live an inspired life, I implemented my source. The second thing I did was I had to surround myself with people who loved me, people who were supportive of me, people who were positive and wanted to help me succeed. I had to surround myself with those people, and I had to shed all of the people who were trying to use me up and toss me to the side. I even sought professional help. Yeah, that's right, I got mental health services because I needed somebody who really knew how to dig down deep and pull that stinking thinking up out of me. So I got professional help. So number, the second thing I did was support system. The third thing is affirmations. Okay, yep, I, I saw some shoulders go down like, oh, here we go. Affirmations, here we go with that. I am somebody, <laughs> right? This is some BS. <laughs> and you know what, you're absolutely right. This is BS belief system. See, I had to change my belief system. I had to implement something that helped to change my belief system. I am is the most powerful affirmation we can use because we don't live in the future, we don't live in the past, we live in the present. So I am beautiful, I am successful, I am talented, I am all of that. I am statements, they work. So the fourth thing that I did was I had to have an attitude of gratitude in order to move from hopelessness to happiness to live in this inspired life. So the best way I can kind of make this come to life is, let's say that there's a guy who's driving a Ford. He drives up next to this guy who has this nice sports car. Now see, my mama will say it's a Bugatti because she'd be like, ooh, I love me some Bugatti. That's not really how she talks, that's how I talk when I'm talking about her. So she sees, you know, the guy pulls up, he sees this Bugatti, he's like, man, I sure wish I had me a Bugatti. And then next to him, Rides somebody with a bike, and they say, man, I sure wish I had a car. Then there's a guy who walks past and says, man, I sure wish I had a bike. And then there's a guy who's looking down from the balcony, and he's sitting in a wheelchair, and he says, I sure wish I could walk. So the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter where you are in life. Somebody always wants to be where you are. So you have to have an attitude of gratitude. Yes. You have to have an attitude of gratitude. 
I am so happy and grateful today that I was able to walk up here on the stage on my own. I'm so happy and grateful today that I'm able to afford my mortgage. I am so happy and grateful today that I had something to eat. I am so happy and grateful today that I had oxygen that I can breathe in without having any kind of machine. See, you don't have to have all these extravagant things. I'm so happy and grateful today that, and then you all can fill in the blank. Now, the fifth and final key that I implemented, y'all, was that life lessons are to be learned. So everything that I went through was not for me. It was so that I can reach back and help somebody else. Life lessons, y'all. That's what I had to do. And so when we go through something, we have to grow through it and learn and reach back and help somebody else. See, there's, there's no testimony without a test. And sometimes it's got to be some mess in order to have a message. And that's what we have to do. So my life lesson to you is don't wait until the last straw. Don't wait until the last straw. See, my last straw was when I had to yell out to my daughter to call 911 to save me. That was my last straw. But from the time I was 14 years old all the way up to that point, so much damage had already occurred. So much damage. And I don't want that for you all. That's my life lesson. I would love to know what your takeaway is for our chat today. I would love to know that. Because see, your takeaway could literally save someone's life. So I want you all to text me at 586-298-2121. That's 586-298-2121. And I want you to text me, what is your takeaway? What is your life lesson? Please connect with me, because I definitely want to connect with you. I thank you so much. My name is Michelle D. Clark with Lift Life Coaching Solutions, where we are living inspired, free, and transformed. Thank you.